if that intro doesn't solidify that this game is going to be awesome, I don't know what does. It's simple and to the point. <laughs> Just screaming. Evil sounding ad lib music and some classic fantasy action artwork. That's all you need to know. Realms of Chaos. Actually, I wasn't kidding. That really is all you need to know, but I guess you're here for a review, so let's get to it. Realms of Chaos is an Apogee Software title from 1995. It is a traditionally Western fantasy action platform game in the vein of Altered Beast and Jill of the Jungle. It appears it is known for its violence and damage toward realistic objects, as stated by the good old Arsac. Realms of Chaos is an exciting adventure platform game that takes place in the fantastic world of Mysteria. And I bet they stayed up all night coming up with that one. I got this copy of the game directly from Apogee back in the day, back when you can order these from them. Quick bit of trivia. Realms of Chaos was originally going to be called Paganitsu 2, the Bloodfire Pendant. For those of you who may not know, Paganitsu was a top-down adventure puzzle game by Apogee from four years prior, designed by Keith Schuler, the same guy designing Realms of Chaos. And maybe Realms was originally going to be a puzzle game too, or Alabama Smith would be going around slashing wolves and spiders. Who knows? I do know it was originally planned to be a 16-color EGA game from 1992 to 1994, but with VGA graphics being the in thing at the time, they upgraded, and after a three-year development, removed the Paganitsu stuff and changed it to the hack-and-slash VGA game Realms of Chaos. <laughs> Forever to be known for its violence toward realistic objects, the game starts off with an array of difficulty settings, which seems excessive, but I suppose it's nice to have the choice. The hardest is the hardest. The easiest is the easiest, so I usually pick the middle default option, since I have a Goldilocks complex. The main draw of the game, other than being cool, is that similar to Altered Beast, you play as a buffed-up hairy man dude named Endric, armed with a giant tool. But you can also switch to his feminine side, Elandra, who is the typical well-endowed Amazon lady with hardly any clothes, and the ability to annihilate anything that moves as long as she has access to jewelry. You can switch genders as often as you like, with no ill side effects, and each character has their own health bars. So it gives you a bit of strategy to the gameplay, but kind of like in Lost Vikings, if one character dies, well, that's it. Even if the other one has full health, you can't go on, so the level just restarts. I suppose they're chained together in spirit or some such nonsense, who knows? It's just how it is, and you will accept it. Of course, Mr. Man is the stronger, slower character who can't run or jump because he is white, but also he has a powerful sword. And of course, the lovely lady is the quick and nimble character who has less strength and health, but can get around areas that the dude can't. You will be switching genders rather constantly, especially once you learn the levels. And yes, this is one of those where you will really want to learn those levels, as there are plenty of cheap shots and level hazards that will quickly off you if you aren't careful. Now, the levels themselves are pretty standard. You have your woodsy world, your graveyard world, your marsh world, your underground passageways world. But the thing that really sets this apart is something intangible. It's this dark, foreboding atmosphere. It just seems like a Hieronymus Bosch painting or something. Oh, maybe not that quite twisted and weird, but it's, it's different than any other platform game of this genre that I've played. I mean, Altered Beast feels a little more cartoony, and this one does too, but yeah, I don't know. It's almost like Splatterhouse or something. You know, there's something different about it. Mostly it's just the standard going left to right platforming, but some levels are quite maze-like, and others you'll be constantly moving forward, trying not to fall off the screen's edge. Just don't get too far ahead either. It doesn't work. It's all just done so well, it's drawn nicely, the animation is quite smooth, and it feels satisfying to interact with. You don't ever feel like you're slipping or loose or something when you're jumping on platforms and such. You're not really ever out of control of your character, it just feels solid. Yet a little bit more free-feeling than Jill of the Jungle. It's a nice mix. It feels like a good time to mention the controls. They are awesome. Now that that's out of the way, I may as well get the music and sound comments in here too. I mentioned earlier that I love the atmosphere. Well, I love the sound effects as well. They're simple, but effective. The death screams are especially cool, and the sound your sword makes killing things is nothing short of radical. 
I mean, just that thrill of killing stuff and they burst into blood spatters is already oddly visceral, and these sound effects just make it that much better. The music is also top-notch, being done by Bobby Prince, the guy that did so many id and apogee games like Duke Nukem 2, Commander Keen, and Doom. What a great guy. Makes great tunes, and they sound great too. Whether it be Adlib, Sound Blaster, Roland, it's all good. There are 26 levels divided up into three episodes, usually about two or three levels per world. There are several bosses, and many of these are actually quite unique, like this skeleton guy. You chop his head off and then beat him to death with it. Now that's excellent. So the dude has his sword and the chick has her magic yellow balls. But if you're wondering if maybe there's any power-ups, well, kind of. For Elandra's magic fireball things, you get these red jewels to use as ammo. If you use the jewels enough and you run out, well, you're left with Uber Alpha Male's sword. But if you get enough jewels stockpiled, you can also use certain abilities when you pick up power-ups, like shields and extra powerful weapons. They remain activated so long as you have enough jewels to keep them so. For me, though, this really doesn't happen often enough, so you usually are stuck with the main weapons. If you play the game through all the episodes start to finish, though, you rack up a decent arsenal, your health increases, but this does take time, of course. Thankfully, you can save your game and pick it up from the level you left off. When it comes down to it, Realms of Chaos is nothing absolutely groundbreaking, but I don't think it was trying to be. It just feels right, if you know what I mean by that. The controls aren't too floaty, but it's not too heavy or bumbling around either. Apogee knew what they were doing. And you know, now that I think about it, it might be their last platform game, and they'd made lots to this point, so obviously they had the experience to make one that's solid. In the land of PC action platform games, it stands out as amazing, simply because it looks great, plays great, and is overall so well made. If you're looking for the next Mario World, this isn't it. It is, however, one excessively fun game in short bursts, and I would easily recommend it to any platform game fan.